part of the Press Play Podcast Network. We're back, everybody. Where did we go? We took a week off. Yeah, we were just kind of needed a break. Yeah, you know, nothing going on in sports or anything last Thursday when we normally record. Yeah, so I think the, the original plan was we're going to go watch the draft, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, then we'll record the podcast the next day mm-hmm. and we'll talk about reactions to the first round. Yeah. Well, we went out and watched the draft and we were out a little late. And the next morning we were both like, eh, eh. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't that much to talk about for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were really bored with the draft. Yeah, I was bored. And our evening went a little wonky because we, we go out and there's this little kind of like hidden pizza place. Secret gym. Yeah. And we get there and we're super stoked. Our buddy's already there. He's got a table, big screens for the draft. Um, he'd ordered a pizza. It got there shortly after we got there. And then we order some food. And shortly after <laughs> we order food, the entire kitchen staff quits. Mass mutiny. Yeah. They have an item on the menu. It's a one pound meatball. Mm -hmm. It's a meatball that is stuffed with mozzarella cheese. Go on. And covered in sauce. Praise the Lord. And I'm really excited. I order the food, Uh right? Yeah. They bring out this (laughs) bowl. (laughs) They bring out a bowl and I look in the bowl and I just see sauce. And I look at the waitress and I went, "Is is the meatball in there? Is it in there? Is it in there? No. She looks at me. Hold on. Let me interrupt. Let me interrupt. Because I feel like, as always, whatever I add is more important than whatever Fair you're enough. saying. Yeah. Because I'm a narcissist. It's okay. Yes, you said that. You said it so convincingly <laughs> that you, like, if you weren't so ugly, you could be an actor. Wow. That's like hurtful. that you so No, no, I'm saying you you were acting Philip so well. Philip Seymour Hoffman was an actor who made a lot of money and he's uglier than I me. know exactly what I said. Okay. Okay. He's still a better looking actor. Than He's dead. I know. Wow. <laughs> I hate you so, so much. <laughs> too oh, you're far. Choking yourself. That's way too far. So, anyhow. Can we leave that in or should we take that out? No, you can leave that in. Are you sure? 100%. You need to get. The, the, I feel like go. I'm going to get canceled for that one. Nah. Um, so, anyway, she brings out this massive bowl. <laughs> it's huge. Like what you would expect a one pound meatball to be in. And there is definitely a whole jar of Kroger pasta sauce. Correct. And ah, meatball. And you can't even see the meatball at first. This is like frozen meatball into the microwave. Maybe two ounces. Maybe. Gary looks like someone just told him Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stabbed in the heart. I was so excited. No, like genuinely. Yes. It, I wasn't acting. I was legit like hurt inside gary looks like he worked up the courage to ask out his high school sweetheart and found out she's had a three-year boyfriend yeah it was hurtful it wasn't fun so gary looks like, like he's <laughs> we're gonna keep starving going. and he rolls into chick-fil-a on a sunday and then he's like oh yeah except around here everybody knows yeah that's all the analogies no i can Jesus think of on the fly on but anyway um so great I, I, what? three and a half minutes in guys Welcome to the show. We're just getting started. Go ahead. Yes. So the meatball, the non-existent meatball, it's literally two ounces. I go up to the counter because our waitress at this point is avoiding eye contact, right? She knows that A.A. Ron done effed up. So we know that there's a problem. She won't make eye contact. So I go up to the bar with my bowl of sauce. Yeah. And I'm like, um, I, I don't mean to like. Because you coached me. Because normally my reaction would be, what the... And I kind of Well, I just my, don't want all of our mind. food spit in the rest of the night. Well, it didn't matter because the whole kitchen crew quit. Well, yeah. I ordered loaded tots and they came out microwave. Yeah, for sure. With shredded cheese on it. <laughs> right? It was not good. It looked like my wife was out of town and I was cooking for the kids. <laughs> I take the bowl to the bar. I mean, that's sexist and I made fun of a dead person. All in... The first three minutes. minutes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to go okay, hard. In the paint so today. back to your meatless ball. So I, I take it up and I look at the, the girl behind the bar and I'm like, ma'am, I don't mean to be a pain, but is this the one pound meatball? And she went, um, well, it's the appetizer version. And I look right at her and I said, ma'am, the one pound meatball is on the appetizer menu. Like that's the, there isn't another version <laughs> And she was like, well, to to be honest, the whole kitchen crew just quit. It was our waitress's first night. It, it was her first <laughs> night. And I was like, 
she was like, well, we can discount it for you. And I went, yeah, I'm not paying $14 for that. I think I'll pay one sixteenth of that price because this is a one ounce. Yeah. Ball. And, and they ended up get, they didn't charge me. She was like, well, Keep you don't tell them this story. This is going really well. You don't want it. And I was like, no, ma'am, I don't. Well, but it gets better because then we leave that place because there's Does no Does it food. get better? Yes. And we go to a different place. There's like six of us. They also are closing the kitchen. By the way, six of us, the lightest person's 225 pounds. Correct. And the best in shape person is 280 and scares everybody. Well, yeah. Yes. So, and he's he hasn't eaten all day. I'm not, I don't weigh 280. No, I'm not talking about you. Oh. I'm talking about Andy. You said. Yeah. You're not scary at all. You're just a, a round dude who's funny. Yeah, you're not scary in the least. You you said I was uglier than dead Philip Seymour Hoffman. You're gonna so you sit can there. That. You're gonna fat shame me. Yes, a hundred percent. You can take it. How dare you? Yeah, you said I was uglier than dead uh, Philip it's Seymour. It's 2022, Hoffman. bro. Yep, hundred percent. So Andy just bails. He's like, I'm going to Chipotle and going home. I'm gonna do a boudoir photo shoot. Please, please do. I would love to have. Did I say that right? That. Yes, you did. I, I, I'm gonna text your wife and make that happen. Don't you text my wife about my dirty photos. <laughs> They're not for you. So anyhow, long story short, we were out late, didn't feel like podcasting in the morning. So you're going to get NFL stuff today. You're going to get card stuff. You're going to get Bowman stuff. You're going to get a whole lot of content because we skipped a week. But the point is, Gary didn't get his meatball. No, I didn't. It, well, I was still disappointed. The whole night was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> Like, it concluded with us finally finding a place that had food, and they had rumple mints, which is, like, my go-to shot, and then Warm I ordered though. around for everybody, Ooh. and if it's above 39 degrees, throw it in the trash. It's awful. It was at least 52. It was rough. I think it might have been, like, you know how the fridge, the behind a refrigerator, there's heat because of the blower? I think that's where they had the rumple mints. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a good situation. Well, I manned up, took two shots of it. No, I did not. I took the one and almost and died. I went home and slept in, and uh, here we are, guys. Seven minutes into the episode. Haven't said a word about sports. By the way, cards. this is the Ball Card <laughs> Show, the sports podcast. For the sports collector. I'm Jason. I'm Gary. And we're part of the Press Play Podcast Network. If you haven't heard about them, you have now. Absolutely. Check them out. Lots of great content. We're happy to be part of that family. So let's get started with some some news. Yeah. What you got? Ah. Uh, Oh, that was not news. That was just like lunch making a late appearance. No, I'm drinking an IPA, so Ooh. it's a little chunky. Yeah, you made me uh, take a sip of that. And the verdict? Awful. Bodie. IPAs are like licking asphalt. It's awful. I thought that sentence was headed somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't take it that deep. Same difference. But um, here we go. So PWCC, CSG, we got this interesting combination. When I heard that PWCC was doing potentially anything with anybody, the first thing I thought about that a lot of newer collectors think about is the little bit of hot water question mark that PWCC got in because of the shell bids and eBay quote unquote cracking down. But it sounds like there's a little more to the story and I'm actually excited to see this partnership. So Hobby News, I'll let you just tell everybody what's happening and yeah. why you think it's a good or bad thing. Sure. So um, if you're not aware of who PWCC is other than that they used to be the largest seller of sports cards on eBay. Um, PWCC used to be that. They don't sell on eBay anymore. Uh, they were banned uh, partly for shield building, partly because they were launching their own competing service to eBay, their own marketplace, kind of like Golden's marketplace for higher end stuff. But even before they were on eBay, they were a really big name in the sports card world they have a vault so you can ship them your stuff and they securely store it you can sell from there and the new owner can choose to keep it there or have it shipped from there long story short they're huge right and there was a there was a pretty good hustle for people that had collected through the junk wax era because when you would send off you could send off these one and two dollar cards you could send a bulk amount over you're thinking of com c <laughs> you're not thinking of pwcc <laughs> Different company. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll turn it back back over to you. That's okay. Just go over here eating my meatball. <laughs> um, so anyway, PWCC got kicked off of eBay, launched their marketplace. It's been pretty successful. Um, but they just partnered with CSG. Now, this follows up CSG's partnership with eBay, right? 
If you're not familiar, CSG's partnership with eBay, they are now the authenticator for any sports card that sold for over five hundred dollars on oh, a platform. I thought it was seventy five. No, I think it's five hundred. He, well, there was talk about it seven fifty. Double check me, but guys, we sure don't know anything. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I know. Uh, it's five hundred, but they authenticate the card and then send it on to the purchaser. Um, CSG just partnered with PWCC. Now, when you've got a high end raw card that you want to run through PWCC's auctions, and PWCC's auctions are like Goldens, they only run slabbed stuff. You can now expedite that process. You can send your raw card to PWCC. They will send it to CSG. CSG will uh, authenticate and grade it, I think, within 10 days, and then it will be listed on PWCC's auction. Um, the fact that PWCC is not only bringing CSG slabs into that higher-end world, but also utilizing uh, CSG uh, for the grading of raw stuff for their platform is huge for the credibility of CSG in the marketplace. So the value is definitely way above 75. Yeah. According to this first TechCrunch article I pulled up, 750, and the goal is by the end of the year, anything that has a value over 250 will get that authentication. Yeah. So I think it's at 500 now. Uh, is the number where it's at now and continue to work its way there. I think that eBay is eventually going to offer a very similar service to PWCC that if you buy a raw card, it gets sent in for authentication. If you want it to be graded, you can pay X dollars more and eBay will take a cut of it and so on and so forth. That's where that's going. Long story short, though, CSG is making huge inroads in, in the areas, and this is what's really interesting. They aren't targeting the end user. Mm -hmm. they're targeting the services that end users utilize and making themselves the platform that those companies use, eBay, PWCC. Would you compare this to like StockX with sneakers? Um, I, I don't know, only because PWCC's marketplace isn't the same type of thing. It's more of an, just an auction marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's very interesting to watch CSG's business strategy unfold. The they, authentication side of it and the grading side of it would be pretty similar. Yes, and they're not, but they're not, CSG is not advertising and targeting people to send them cards to mm. grade. They do, but that's not their push. Is PWCC um, storing then after the grade for you to sell or hang on to? With them? Correct. They have a vault, yes. And even if you sell something on their platform, you'll get paid out from it, but if the buyer just wants it to stay in their vault, it will in the yeah. ownership transfer. So that's an option too. If it's cards that you know hold a value, but it's not a PC card. Yep. That's not a bad way to and address that. If it's if you've got a really big collection, a valuable collection, and you don't want to carry your own collectibles insurance, PWCC's system covers that stuff. It's insured. Third and with everything else that's happening with CSG, if you think that they are as I do, going to be rising to the top as a grading company yeah, I think in the be sports card world. Be. Yeah. And you have some raw stuff that's decent. It's not a bad idea to uh, run that through them and at least keep it in their warehouse. And then you could move it later, hold on to it for a few years, especially if it grades out well. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's a good way to diversify. Well, we this is your, this is your little, this is your little uh, Cayman account. Yeah. You know? Well, we just shipped a bulk order to CSG last week. You and I did. We They're still cheap. 67 cards, and with shipping and insurance, we were in them for about 15 bucks a piece. So uh, there's, they've actually got a bulk service that's affordable, and, um, I mean, I think your minimum is 50 cards, so if you're going to be sending them a bulk order, you're going to be in there for seven fifty. And if it comes back decent, I'll probably get ready to do another one right away. I, I think that now is a really good time to stock up on their stuff. Agreed. Uh, SGC is another one that SGC has managed to, and I know I'm diverting, but they've managed to deliver on what they promise. They've already surpassed BGS. Yeah. Their they, tens are selling more here's than BGS gonna, 9 fives. And they already had the corner market on vintage yep. and old stuff. So... Uh, not to knock on PSA because it does sound like they're trying to figure some things out where they'll be able to expedite some services. They still are reputable, but I, I think that um, some of these other connections, the Fanatics piece, 
There's just a lot of moving parts. So well, there's a big PSA scandal this week. Oh, I missed that came out. out. Um, so card porn is an Instagram account. Um, if you and and the thing with them is they Expose. like them or <laughs> well yeah, like them or or hate them, they do a really good job for the most part of keeping entities within this hobby accountable. Sometimes they make mistakes. Sometimes they screw up. Sometimes they get aggressive when they shouldn't. But this was a situation. So there's a seller on eBay uh, called Kong's Cards, and they're a big, big seller. Big seller. Um, evidently, they've been trimming cards. Oof. Big time trimming cards. And hey, card, break and, that down for people because... Yeah, so trimming cards, say you buy a card and it's got a slightly soft corner. If you know what you're doing and you have the right tools, you can trim that card and cut away the imperfection. And how long has this been going on? Forever? Well, uh, yeah, it's been going on forever. And there was there were card trimming scandals with PSA back in the day. Um, it, it's not an uncommon thing. But here's what's crazy about it. And this is the one thing I will say that I hate about that card porn account is they are kind of... Um, they like to hold people accountable, but they don't like to hold PSA accountable. Mm. So Kong's cards, they actually came up with irrefutable proof that they have been trimming cards. Mm -hmm. Photographic evidence. Um, the the one in particular was a uh, championship ticket, uh, rookie ticket, uh, Trevor Lawrence autograph that, that Kong's cards account bought raw on eBay, sent it in for express grading, and then they got a 10. And when you look at the raw card, it's very obviously a super soft, whited corner on the top right. And on the graded version, it's not there. So as soon as they proved this, PSA went in and deserted all of the slabs that Kong's cards have ever done. But here's the thing that nobody's talking about. PSA graded and authenticated thousands of trimmed cards and put them in their slabs and put them out in the market. Who's going to hold PSA accountable for that? PSA's own terms of service says that they now owe a lot of money to people who bought those cards. Mm -hmm. Do we think they're going to pay it? Mm -hmm. I don't. Do we think people that have tens that are trimmed that say authentic are going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I might have an altered card here. <laughs> right. Like that's, that's why. And, and people are like, well, how did it get through? Well, here's how it gets through. PSA is looking at cards for about 30 seconds. That's all they have time to look it at. It doesn't that for. blow your mind when you think about what they charge? Yeah. And how long you wait. Yeah. And what you're paying. Yeah. And what those people are getting paid. Yeah. So it, it's it makes it pretty clear why people think they can just start a grading business overnight, right? There's so much to it. You can do everything right and somebody can try to take advantage of you and screw you over. You can have the best of intentions as a grader and make mistakes. And you don't know, we don't know how that's set out. We don't know it. Now, typically with PSA, do you know if, so if somebody did a group sub of 300 cards, is the same grader doing that whole stack? I have no clue. See, that's what I'm saying. I, so I, I doubt you it. could have 20 people making a mistake and 20 cards get through because they look pretty close and under a magnifying glass or a, I mean, it's more than magnifying glass, but yeah. uh, under the lens, it's, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've 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 derailed a little bit, but SGC has a background of grading the old stuff, correct? And especially, if I recall correctly, they are really well known for calling out the altered stuff and yes. really ticking well, they've off got people. Some really high end equipment to do that with. Yeah, um, they've got some some scanners and some light boxes that are multi five figure. But when I say five figure, I don't mean three or four thousand dollars. I mean eighty, ninety thousand dollar pieces of yeah. equipment for that purpose. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, I know, like you said, we got a little bit off the rails, but those but are all kind of important things that are happening right now. You and I, I think, both feel the same way that the the stock for CSG is going up. We're not sponsored by CSG. I'd love for that to happen. Sure, give <laughs> us some money. Uh, but I just think that just they there's a positioning going on. With CSG, the people that are involved, the partnerships that they're making that I think in the long term, if I was day trading, this is a stock I'm buying right now. Oh, for sure. So, uh, you know, I was sent off. I think I gave you like 20 cards. Yeah. There, I'm just going to sell a few of them and cover the cost for the grading. And then I'll probably sit on a lot of that for a few years because I think it's going to take a little bit of time. 
but the reputation of this grading company now that they've addressed how ugly the slabs are. Yep. I think the labels, not the slabs. Yep. Not the slabs. Oh, the flips God. were real bad. The green yeah. was they weren't as bad in person, but still they were rough. So let's take a minute to talk about what we didn't talk about last week, which is the NFL draft, which this was the first year in five years. Yep. At least where Miami is irrelevant in the draft. Well, that's true, but it's not the first time in five years that once the draft was over, Miami was still irrelevant. (laughs) I wish that we were doing this on video because the look that Jason just gave me was priceless. I want to say so many bad words right now, but how how dare you is what I'll start with. (laughs) And I'm sure all the Bengals fans are walking around like Conor McGregor. Who? That IPA really got you, didn't it? I think it did. Connor McGregor? <laughs> Are you Scrooge McDuck? What's going on right now? I'm going to let you enjoy your moment. <laughs> say one thing. I say one. Uh, Connor McGregor. Oh, shoot. Anyhow, NFL draft. What do you got over here? I was just going to say how the Bengals fans forget that they just now are starting to build a practice facility. Oh, no, we all know. We don't forget. We know. We've okay. lived through Mike Brown. All right, so don't get all high and mighty on me. Oh, no, I'm still going to do that. 100%. I like it. <laughs> um, anyway, so let's play a little game. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yep. You paid way more attention to the draft this year than I did. Yep. But I wrote down a couple teams that I was interested in talking about. You gave me more than I did. But let's start out with the Jags. The Jags did Jags things. Thumbs oh, so the game is thumbs, thumbs up or down. thumbs down? Thumbs down. Thumbs down? Why? Yes. So I have a little bit different perspective than a lot of people do. And that's just because I was involved in the game. When you draft. Hold on. What? When you draft. No, before that. I was involved in the game for a really long time. Oh, football. Yes. Gotcha. When you draft based on physical traits. One more question. Yes. Can you throw a football over that mountain? No. There are no mountains here. Should you be soaking it up in a hot tub with your soulmate? No. Okay. Okay. So back to the Jags. That's all the questions I have. When we when a team drafts physical upside instead of actual production, it usually turns out badly. Trayvon Walker has lots of physical upside. And he does not stand out on tape at all. At all. He doesn't even flash on tape. He just measures well. And they took him number one overall. Who would you compare him to? Like, what would be another example like that? Because I know there's a few. I'm putting you on the spot. I'll give you a second. That's okay. Um, The guy I think he's probably going to end up being compared to in the long run is Mike Mamula. Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't say Dan Wilkinson, although I think that their career production will probably end up being very similar but dan wilkinson was a guy like that of ohio state 20 years ago you know massive measurables goes number one overall and just has a meh nfl career i think that's going to be trayvon walker Mm -hmm. um aiden hutchinson was such a no-brainer number one overall pick (laughs) like absolute unequivocal no-brainer situation and the jags were like hold my beer like, I, I just don't understand the thought process. We don't even need Urban's help for this one. No, we can screw <laughs> this up without him. Like, I, I just, it's, it's a, uh, Aiden Hutchinson, here's the question. It's, it's very simple. If you boil it down this way, if you're picking first in the draft, would you rather take a guy who has a 15% chance to be Reggie White, or would you rather mm. take a guy who has a 90% chance to be Jason Pierre-Paul? That's a, a great way of putting it. Aiden Hutchinson has a 90% chance yeah. of being Jason Pierre-Paul or better. Mm-hmm. He's a dude who's going to have 8 to 10 sacks damn near every year. He's going to play the run pretty mm-hmm. well. And he's got enough flexibility that if you switch to a 3-4, he can stand yep. up. Yep. Trayvon Walker can't do any of that stuff. Yep. There's a 15% chance that he actually lives up to what his physical capabilities are. But you can't run an NFL franchise on 15% chances. And, and the strange thing with this is it's never changed for the Jags. No. So let me just put it in hobby perspective. I bought that massive collection last year going through it. I got to the Jags and what did I do? I called you. Mm-hmm. 
Like, hey, I just want to make sure as I'm going through these thousands of Jags cards <laughs> that I'm not missing anybody. And you said, you're not. No, there's nothing to even look for it's from a sad standpoint. Yeah. Because rookie card, draft class, they draft terribly. Yes. And they always have. So the, thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs, thumbs down. down. All right. Now let's move on to an awkward moment that happened. I think it was more awkward for you, but I mean, I wasn't ever in the game. Okay, what was the awkward moment? We're going to talk about Pickett and Pittsburgh. So it wasn't it wasn't so much awkward moment. One, first off, before you yes, say anything, because you're going to add a lot to it. Being drafted as a quarterback for the Steelers organization, I think is a big deal. It is. It's run like a family business for real. Yes. They take care of their athletes. Yep. They, I mean, in a lot of ways... They're able, and it's not like saying this isn't a quality of play, but they're the mom and pop diner that doesn't care if you think They've that they should the ever. Rudolph for four years. They don't want. They don't care about open table for reservations. If you want to come in, you can't sit there because so and so sits in that seat at yeah. the diner every day. Yeah. So it's such an honor to be a part of that type of an organization yep. that's have that career. Now I hate the Steelers as a fan. Right. But as an organization, I know that they're good to their players. Oh, yeah. And they and they run their franchise while they draft. And it's well. a big deal. But Pickett goes. Now, let's start off, first of all, terrible quarterback class. See, I don't think it's a terrible quarterback class. Unexciting quarterback class for the hobby. I'll give you unexciting for the hobby. I don't think it's a terrible quarterback class. I don't think it's as good as it could have been in other years, but it's not terrible. Um, so Kenny Pickett gets drafted by the Steelers, 20th overall. A lot of people were shocked, and I think the person who was shocked the most was Kenny Pickett. Everybody <laughs> thought well Malik Willis was going to go there. Um, and not only was Kenny Pickett the first quarterback taken, but he was the only quarterback taken before the third round, which is just mind-blowing. It's like the 2013 NFL draft when it was like E.J. Manuel and J.P. Lozman, and that was it. Yeah. And you know how that turned out. Um, but here is my concern, and, I, and this sounds so douchey. I get it. But I that's can, not your style, really. I can <laughs> I can tell you as somebody in a locker room, it takes a lot of strength to be emotionally vulnerable. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But this dude broke down for five minutes on national TV and sobbed on his father's shoulder. Couldn't even go on the stage. It was a legitimate five minutes. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to play in a locker room. It's a question of. So here's the problem. Who was there? <laughs> Who was there just before you? Like that people are thinking about. Yeah. Big Ben. Has no soul. Just Big yeah. Ben. <laughs> what I hate about him, I also love about him. He's stubborn, doesn't care, thinks he's still in it every time, doesn't want to hang it up. Like all of those things, yeah. right? However, if you're a veteran that's been there 20 years and you see this kid balling for five minutes, yeah. you're going to put him in the Tua category where he's it's going to take fragile. some work to get that like, C on the jersey. That's my concern when I look at it. It's one thing to have enough strength to like shed a tear. It's another thing to be so emotionally fragile that you can't pull it together after 20 seconds and and go be the leader. Yeah, I, I'm so I'm more defensive of him than you are, just because of how monumental that moment is, and the program and where he got picked and he wasn't expecting it, but. Pretty quickly in training camp, they're going to know, Yeah, is this how it's going to be? Now, I do think that Kenny Pickett is likely, just like what we were just talking about with Hutchinson and Trayvon Walker, he's likely to have the best career of all the quarterbacks drafted yeah, this he's year. he's set up for success. His floor is very high. His ceiling is not super high. I think he is, <laughs> he's Andy Dalton. He's that type of a dude. Um, he can move a little bit. He can make all the throws, although he can't make all of them with massive velocity. He doesn't have Malik Willis's arm. Um, he's got some mobility. He can move around inside the pocket and get on the edge a little bit. Um, but he's going to need a strong running game. He's not going to win games for you by himself. I don't see that happening. Um, so I, I think that in the long run, he is going to probably end up being likely the best quarterback in this class. Although Malik Willis has the most upside mm -hmm. by far. And the dude that I think really is the wild card in all this is um, 
Matt Coral. Uh, if, if Matt Coral can learn to make full field reads, his release is so fast that he could end up being pretty good in a couple of years. But anyhow, next. Uh, you didn't say thumbs up, thumbs down to the Steelers on that pick. Oh, sounds like a thumbs up overall. It's a thumbs up overall. Cautious it's thumbs a, up. It's a thumb sideways for the five minute sob fest. Yeah. Like, I just don't know how it's going to It could go two ways, though, because here's what you don't think about. The guys that are the veterans in the league are like 30. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, they're young enough. We're like, if Colt. How am I trying to say this? They just don't make them like they used to. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Up next, so I'm going to go ahead and say thumbs up. The little bit that I did pay attention, I felt like this organization knocked it out of the park, and it's good and bad for me as a Dolphins fan, but I thought the Jets may have had the best draft this year. It was a spectacular draft. The choices that they made, what they're trying to build, I thought they did a fantastic job, and you have to be careful because the the Jets are a program that, because they're historically so terrible, you don't pay attention to, and little by little organizations like that build talent around them, build talent around them, build talent around them. They get some coaching, and then you have chemistry with players, and it gets scary really fast for a division. Well, they've they've got a great coach. I'm a big Robert Sala guy. Uh, I think he is a leader of men, and I think that locker room has his back. I'm not convinced that Zach Wilson can play in the NFL. He may prove me wrong this year. Uh, he had flashes last year, but overall, I just don't know that he can consistently see the field well enough to be the answer at quarterback for them. That being said, that being said, overall, uh, the Jets, I don't think they could have drafted better. I really don't. You get Ahmad Gardner at number four, no-brainer pick. This dude gave up a total Mm -hmm. of 61 yards through the air his entire senior year. That's ridiculous. That's insane. (laughs) 61 yards. He's long, he's fast, he's got great ball skills. He can move. Uh, He's going to be a day one starter uh, and be really, really good. Um, Getting Garrett Wilson at 10, they had to just be doing backflips when the Falcons took Drake London. They had to just be doing backflips. We'll talk about that in a minute. I know, but they had to just be going, they did what? Yes. (laughs) Merry Christmas to me. (laughs) Yes. Garrett Wilson is a dude. Garrett Wilson is an absolute dude. I mean, the weapons are just kind of, it, it shouldn't be said like this, but they're quietly filing into New York. Yeah. Well, and, and then they were able to trade up and, and take Jermaine Johnson. Which may have been the biggest pick oh, for them. Yeah. He, he was a top 12, top 15 talent, and he just slid. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, we're not going to let that happen. And then uh, getting Brees Hall in the second round yeah. to pair with Michael Carter. Because let's be honest, in the NFL anymore, there aren't too many bellwether backs. You got Nick Chubb. Even the Cowboys are splitting carries between Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott. Um, And they're paying Zeke Elliott a lot of money to split carries with Tony Pollard. So I think that Brees Hall's a really good running back. He's got great vision. He's got great contact balance. A lot of of running backs, when they get contacted, it takes them a second to get back moving. He's got great contact balance. He's really, really good. How's his contact balance? It's it's really good. And then they took Jeremy Ruckert, another Ohio State kid. Um, fourth or fifth round, um, fourth round. He, uh, he's a guy who's going to take a little bit of time to develop. He's not ever going to be amazing at anything, but he's just going to be really good at things. He's going to start off and be a great special teams contributor, good second or third tight end. And he'll eventually develop into a very adequate edge blocker and a really solid, like short game receiving option so thumbs up thumbs down to the thumbs Jets. up like thumbs the biggest up, thumbs two up. thumbs up like hold down the like button in messenger make yeah. the giant thumb all right uh we touched on it this should be a pretty quick one uh falcons thumbs, thumbs up or thumbs down. down yeah yeah what the heck drake london's just a tall dude he's not even that fast he doesn't run amazingly good routes he hasn't been healthy for the most part of two years what in the world i mean they basically just drafted vincent jackson yeah there's 40 of those dudes in the draft. Yeah, this was the only team where I literally was thinking. I mean, the Jags for sure with the first pick, but um, <laughs> this is the only team where I was like, you guys are doing it wrong. I could have seen them like if they took Jamison Williams ahead of Garrett Wilson. Okay, maybe. But Drake London, I mean, he's 6'5", he's 220, he runs like a 
four six forty. Like it's the same thing we talk about baseball with with Pete Alonso. Like there's thirty guys that do what he does. Why? Why? What? Thumbs down. down. All right. Up next. Now this is an interesting one because the game is thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. We're talking Packers. So uh. on the draft for the program, I don't know if you'd say the same thing as me. I'm going to say for the program, it's a thumbs up. And here's why. Okay. The Packers missed their opportunity to be the team last year. Okay. It's over. So now it's time for the sake of the program to discover where are our biggest holes. Do they think it's over though? Do the Packers? Yes. Because if they did, why would they have paid Aaron Rodgers what they paid him? So that's a really interesting point. But then if they didn't think it was over, why would they spend their picks where they did? That's that's exactly my my question. Like I don't the Packers again are a team that I just don't understand what they're trying to accomplish. So for their picks, I'm gonna say thumbs up. Yeah, for, but for their, their organization as the a whole. Aaron Rodgers piece makes no sense. Well, no, it, it felt like the two first round picks were just a great big middle finger to Aaron Rodgers. Was it? He's playing chess and they're playing checkers. Like he's like, do you really want to not have me and lose your wide receiver? I, I don't know. I think that at the end of the day, if you're gonna rebuild, why are you using thirty percent of your salary cap on a quarterback? Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I know it's obvious at this point that you have no faith in Jordan Love. That's fine. But why? If you're going to start over, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, the wide receiver that they traded up and took in the second round, Christian Watson, he's okay. Well, I would just say this. Just get Baker Mayfield over there, Senator Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) Give him a chance in a year. That's the pick. Like, If I could put Baker anywhere, I think that's the program I'd put him in. And I'd make him sit under Aaron Rodgers for for a while and – yeah, you, know. you know what's going to happen with Baker. Well, I do, yeah. The Browns I, I are also going to go full him. Browns. Um, I'm going to let you have the next one. I have to pee. You're going to okay. talk about the Bengals because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's just been over here just like dancing in his chair, and I just got the signal that you need to talk for five minutes. So the Bengals, uh, obviously anybody who listens to this podcast knows I am a big Bengals fan. Um, I loved the Bengals draft. Uh, they got a – top 20 player in the draft uh, at 31. Um, It was really great to see them focus on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, That was uh, an area that I think anybody who watched uh, the Bengals play, especially into the postseason, understood that we needed some help, especially on the outside uh, at the defensive uh, secondary level. And we got that. Getting to Dax, uh, Dax uh, Hill at 31 overall uh, out of Michigan. Again, a kid that a lot of people thought was a top 15 player. Um, Cam Taylor Britt uh, at 60 in the second round, I like even better than Dax and Hill. Uh, Cam Taylor Britt at one point was on the edge of being a first round player. Uh, addressing a little bit of help in a swing tackle developmental prospect in Cordell Volson. Uh, there in the fifth round was was also really solid. I think he's a guy that in a couple three years is going to be a, a really good contributor on this team. The other picks were all developmental stuff. I I, I thought that their last pick, um, the kid from Coastal Carolina, was a little little bit sketchy. But overall, uh, I thought they just absolutely crushed uh, uh, the draft, and they got two starters in the first two rounds. And when you can get two starters in the first two rounds, you're going to be in really, really good shape um, when it's time to, to rock and roll. So, Hey, guys, how's it going? Um, yeah. You anyway, missed all of so my great Bengals, Bengals content. Um, but now that I use the restroom. Oh, yeah. Got a refill now? You're like my dog. She goes out. <laughs> she doesn't eat. Oh, she doesn't eat most of the day. She goes out and does her business, and as soon as that uh, lower intestine is emptied, she goes in and refills it. Well, that's, the problem is you. I'm normally like a light beer guy. Oh, that stuff's rough. <laughs> oh, the stuff <laughs> you are drinking right now is that's absolutely not. rough. Well, that explains it. This is an 8.3. So, oh, so Bengals draft in general. Oh, yeah. The, uh, Bengals, yeah. Um, big big thumbs right. up. So... Let's talk about this because I'm genuinely concerned as somebody who doesn't, I don't know if prospecting is the right word, but doesn't dive that deep into football, draft, Mm -hmm. projections. I look at the last three or four years, and I look at this year. 
and in the hobby, yep, I'm not excited. So one of two things is going to happen. The, Please it, let it be the one where the prices are lower. Well, it, one of two things is going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Either prices are going to come down, and if they don't, product's going to sit on shelves. Or, I guess one of three things. Or people are going to try to sell third-round quarterbacks like their first-round quarterbacks and justify the pricing that way. It's, it could be like Tom Brady, bro. You never know. <laughs> That's going to be the yeah. argument. Yeah. Or... What I think is likely to happen is that we're going to finally start to see the uptick on defensive players that I've been kind of preparing for for the last couple of years. I think it only happens for one year if that happens. But Well, but the thing is, is it only needs to happen for one year for people to start seeing value in it. And then maybe the prospecting part of it won't, but the stuff you've been holding yeah. will. I want those Ed Oliver prices for two years from Me now. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I'm a rich man if that happens. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens on it. Um, I'm not super excited about the class, but the trade-off would be is if it goes the route of hobby products being more affordable, I'll probably jump in more breaks and treat it a little bit like Bowman where, hey, you know, Speaking. I can hit a few teams and hang on to it. You were asking about Bowman University football. Mm-hmm. They are marked as a Bowman first. Oh, yeah, they are marked as Bowman firsts. Now and what's the tentative release on that? It's already out. Oh, it's really? been out. Yeah. Where do you find it? Uh, well, it was only on. It was only through Tops Direct. Uh, there are some hobby shops that have it. You can find it on eBay, but there's singles all over the place. Yeah. How are sealed stuff moving? Uh, sealed stuff first is product. moving at about two fifty. It was one seventy five from Tops website. Still affordable. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, singles are doing okay. The the quarterbacks it's are doing not well. doing Receivers that WWE doing well. first release. No, <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. But it is one of the first NIL licensed products from a major. You think about those Power Five conference teams, like you and I both know, because we're in Columbus area. Like Ohio State fans are ridiculous. Uh huh. We're obnoxious. We're not the worst, but we're up there, right? Fair. You would have an introduction into the hobby that you didn't have before with this prospecting product coming out. Because For sure. by and large, I guess you have like the high end, like the NT and some of that other stuff where um, Immaculate, where the college stuff is popular, but it didn't have the chance at that value. And I think that's what's going to happen is the value on this college stuff, especially if it has a first on it. It's going to be a little different than it used to be. It's going to hold more value. It's not just edge football or well, what, the, the you know. The flagship college product until now has always been Prism Draft. That's kind of been the flagship college product, uh, college uni product. Um, I think that there's a pretty good chance that if Bowman is going to jump back into that world, which they have, that it will become the flagship college product and the Bowman first mm. because the Bowman first label in the hobby carries a lot of weight. Yeah. Speaking of Bowman, as we're wrapping up here. Oh, this might be a little long for a wrap up. I'm excited. <laughs> so let's talk about Bowman baseball. We've been excited about it. It's release. Um, yep. I haven't seen it on shelves yet. You have seen quite a bit of it. You timed it well. Uh, but the big conversation for you, and I saw that you shared this on a lot of socials. Hopefully I you saw it on ours. our Facebook yeah. group. Yeah. I saw you posted in some others. And really good dialogue. The retail Bowman product this year seems to be legitimate. Fantastic. Last year was horrible. So much more value than in hobby. So talk us through some of the numbers, compare yep. it to hobby products. But here's what we're trying to say. Bowman retail might potentially rival at the price point what's going on with hobby, which I don't know of any other product that I would say that about. Agreed. And and so here's here's what I have seen. I have ripped the equivalent of a case of blasters. And it's been from How many is that? 40. 40. Yeah. Yeah. Um and they've been from scattered cases. They haven't all been from the same case. And I realized that in the great grand scheme of things that's a small sample size. But I've also been paying attention to other people's rips of this Bowman retail product. And they've all had very similar results. So a jumbo hobby box uh, has three guaranteed autos and I think four or five guaranteed parallels, right? Colors, paper, and chrome. Those boxes are running about $850. I opened a case, basically a case equivalent of Bowman blasters, which cost me about 50% more than that altogether, right? 
and I pulled eight autographs. I pulled 30 plus colored numbered cards. Uh, only five or six of those were vet paper. Everything else was a chrome numbered card. Um, three of the eight autos that I pulled were numbered to 99 or less. Um, and that has been pretty consistent across what I've seen other people opening this product and seeing. Uh, Which is aggressively better. Oh, so much better. And, and the thing, here's the kicker. This is what, and when people talk about guaranteed autos and they're not guaranteed autos in these boxes, that's 100% true. There's no guaranteed autos in blasters. But I have yet to pick up a load of blasters with eight or more blasters when I bought them and not pulled at least one, if not more autographs. Um, but here's the bigger kicker. Bowman, when you don't hit autographs, the cards that will sell and are popular are the Chrome cards. Paper cards of the really big prospects you can move, but not easily, right? It's Chrome. If I buy a jumbo hobby box, I'm probably going to end up with 60 or 70 Chrome cards out of that jumbo box, right? I bet in the 40 blasters that I opened, I have 500 Chrome cards. Did you mention the price point at retail on these? Uh, yeah, Walmart, they're 31 bucks a piece. So what Wire, were, they're 35 Two years ago, 20, right before everything was going crazy, 1999. every blaster was 20 bucks. Yep, 1999. Yep. So you're, you're spending $30. Quick reminder with Bowman, if you're somebody that's newer to the hobby, this is not an overnight flip. Nope. I mean, the if fast stuff you can. But. Sealed, hang on to it for three years. They're not going to be redemptions in the or retail rip it stuff, all right? Like me, is there any redemptions in the I retail? I haven't seen any redemption. Okay. Bowman doesn't. Actual Bowman, Bowman baseball usually doesn't have redemptions. You know who else isn't in Bowman twenty twenty two? Who? Stephen Kwan. No, he's not. He'll get a. It's, it's, he'll just get a rookie card. It's sad. Yeah, I, I wanted him to have that Bowman, Bowman first and in top series uh, two yeah. and in tops Chrome. Yeah, that's what'll happen. But it, long story short. Uh, I think that that is going to be the case. One of the points I made in that post, if you read it, was that I thought I felt like there were certain prospects that were a little bit more SP. As I've talked to a few more people, um, I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think that there are areas of the country where things are being distributed, where certain things are a little bit more SP or in central Ohio. So George Valera, Ellie De La Cruz, I think they've shipped cases to this area that didn't necessarily have the most of those guys in them. Mm -hmm. um, but I've talked to guys in other areas of the country that have pulled lots of those guys and not a lot of the guys that are closer to their area. Um, but the value is an absolute no brainer. I don't know that I will buy any hobby Bowman this year. So can we talk about something? Yeah. Like you bought, you, you found 40 blasters. Yep. Yeah. And I've been looking for them. Yeah. You should look harder. And, you know, like if I found 40 of them. Yeah. I'd probably, I'd probably be like, hey, I got five for you. Would you? Yeah, I'm one eighth of your friend. Did I did I give you fair warning before Bowman released what was going to happen if I found it? Yeah, but I want you to temper those emotions. <laughs> I set the expectations. You know what I love about you? You're just as impulsive as me. Oh, 100%. So anyway, this has been our episode. Bowman Retail, if you can get it, if you like base, you have to like the product. Yes. I think it's a good year for it. Oh, I do too. It, it hasn't always really been like this prospects. in retail. Did you touch on the fanatic side of it? No. I, I The one thing that I, that I found to be very interesting, so... And there's a few people that are telling me that I'm an idiot for thinking this, but I don't think that I am. It's like 50 people on Facebook. No big deal. Um, Fanatics bought tops eight months or so ago, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that. And top series one was already planned and, and done and printed. I don't know that Bowman baseball was already printed. I think it was probably designed, but I, th I don't know of any large scale company that owns a business that doesn't have at least a hand in the way that it's distributed and the way that it's um, collated. So if, this is what we can expect from Fanatics products on a retail basis. One of two things will happen. Either retail product prices will go through the roof or hobby prices will come back down to earth. 
Uh, I hope it's the latter. Yeah. We'll see. I forgot to talk about my big pickup this week. Oh, your week. big pickup this week? Yeah. So, in my hand, I'm holding a Mosaic Script Auto. It's a beautiful card. Yeah. Gold, green, black, Script Auto. The whiteness of the of player the is goat just absolutely From the Boston me. Celtics, Brian Scalabrini. He's at least 40 pounds overweight in this one. Yeah. And what's that? Is that number to 10? It's not even numbered. Oh, it's not even numbered? <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know he was even signing cards. So his, <laughs> his <laughs> he didn't either. Panini was like, hey, we'll give you like six bucks a signature. What do you think? Here's the thing. Hey, let's look it up right now. Let's do it right now. What look up, up Scalabrini net worth because <laughs> while we're laughing at him, he's probably well, got his well, feet up in the sand. Well, I mean, he was a first round pick, wasn't he? I have no idea. I just remember his interview after the finals where he was like, yeah, I didn't technically play any minutes in the finals, but by the time His my kid... His net worth about $10 million. $10 million. I mean, it's not bad. Um, <laughs> he's like, uh, you know, by the time that my kids are grown, they're going to hear that I played two games. By the time I have grandkids, they're going to be hearing that I was the MVP of the finals. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, I have a ring. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's the big pickup for the week. Brian Scalabrini. I overpaid for this at $10. I think you did. But it's just a cool card. I it's had yours. to have it. It's yeah. fun. Um, so we'll be back next week. I don't think there's a reason for us not to be. No. I mean, there really wasn't last week. And then we just didn't feel like it. Yeah. We love you guys. We actually really do. Oh. 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 Should we make an announcement about this? I, what? The approval you just got. Oh, yes. So we found out today that. We're now approved sellers on Whatnot. If you're not familiar with Whatnot, go download the app. It's spelled just like it sounds, Whatnot. I'm not going to spell that because if you can't spell the words what and not, you're a moron. We don't want your money. listening to our show. Um, it, is a, it is a collectibles marketplace, but everything is done via video and live. There are auctions. There are fixed sales. Uh, there are breaks. And whether it's sports cards or antiques or Funko Pops or whatever, there's something for you on it. Um, and they have a very selective process on who they approve to be sellers. And for some reason, we got through. <laughs> Unbeknownst. <laughs> did you drop the ball card show in there? So soon, I did. So okay. soon, we are going to be running shows on whatnot. Uh, I don't know whether it'll be once a week or once every couple of weeks, but it will be... Um, Everything from live rips to auctions to fixed sale stuff. We'll do some some really cool like three dollar card days where we'll sell cards with values for of two three bucks for a dollar a piece, and just the first people to snag them, grab them. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. It should yeah. be a lot of fun. It should be. Yeah. Fifty two minutes on this one. Well, I mean that's not our longest episode. It's not. Not even close. I think we did an hour. Should I stay once. away from the IPAs? I think that everybody should stay away from IPAs. They taste like trash. Amazing. No, they don't. Yeah. Well, this has been the Ball Car Show, the sports podcast for the sports collector. I'm Jason. I'm Gary. Bye. Peace. Peace.